Heartland Development Group has recently come to terms with Terry Brown to purchase this chunk of land west of Interstate 75. Heartland CEO Emily Carlson presents their plan to City Council expecting swift approval since the site has already been identified for big box retail in the city's comprehensive plan. After she finishes presenting the plan, the city's mayor, Brian Lee, asks the public if there are any comments about the proposal. The principal of Superior High was the first to speak and he stated that Heartland would be a great addition to the community and he let everyone know that they have made a significant donation that has made it possible for the school to open new soccer fields at Lake Meadows Park as well as a new football field near the running trails. Next, Chuckles, the owner of Chuckles Crazy Critter Carnival, stands up to speak. Counselors, Mayor, I am deeply concerned about the applicant's proposal that will result in the destruction of 20 acres of prime forest in the heart of our community. These are forests that I love and that bring me a great deal of peace. And I don't think I'm alone in feeling this way. Do you really want a mall behind the city's largest park? Because I don't, I want a forest. And I'm sure that the migratory birds that live there and the deer that call these forests home will feel the same way. And I urge you all to vote against this plan. And though he wasn't planning on speaking, Terry Brown, the owner of the land, feels like he has to. Mayor Lee, counselors, a great deal of work has gone into getting to this meeting. Surveying, soil samples, engineering, planning, architecture, all done based upon the belief that the city would approve plans that conform to its approved city plans. Denying this request will basically ensure that no developer has any interest in this city. I urge you to consider why Mr. King has problems with this development. Perhaps he fears competition. That makes sense since he had no problem disturbing an equivalent number of acres on the other side of 75. Nor did he have a problem adding key walls to nearly a half mile of coastline. We need to quit clowning around here and get this project approved. Mayor Lee looks rattled but calls the vote. And the project is approved on a vote of six to four. Chuckles could be heard sighing loudly in the back of the room before saying, This isn't the last you've heard of Chuckles! Before leaving the council chambers and slamming the door. In today's episode, we're going to build this new shopping mall and it'll be replete with parking so much that in many people's eyes, it will be a total eyesore. But it's also going to create jobs and generate a great deal of tax revenue, tax revenue that will offset the residential taxes of many local residents and it'll draw many visitors into the area. We're also going to add a grocery store on the opposite side of the street, giving residents of Nicolay Bay their first supermarket. Finally, we'll build those new stadiums that were made possible by Heartland's generous donation to the school district. And if you believe that this development should take place, hit the like button. And if you're on Chuckle's side, hit the like button for that too. And in either case, let me know how you would have voted if you were on the council. And if you don't want to do that, why not just drop me your favorite emoji for the sake of engagement? And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the Michigan side of Nicolay Bay. And we've got a good one today. We're going to be adding in a whole bunch of assets from our new content creator packs, specifically the shopping malls and the sports venues content creator packs. We're going to add a mall right here, a grocery store right about here, a couple of soccer fields here at our park and a football field right here. The entire time we're going to try to respect the topography and think about some of the parking needs specifically as it relates to the retail stores. But before we get to that, I want to go over a couple of fixes that I made in response to your feedback. First, I added some trees around these wildlife enclosures. This was in response to Dontavion's feedback that it was a little weird that there was no protection from these enclosures from all the lights and noise that you'd see at the amusement park. So I really appreciate that feedback and I'm glad to make that fix. The next one was from Sharuka, who had a two-parter and I took both of them and incorporated them into the build. The first one was that we should move the taxi stand. It was right here before, right in the center, and it blocked the view of the main gate. So I just shifted that over here and it looks a ton better. The second one was that we should add in a toll booth to the parking area. And I didn't want to add in a full toll booth. So I searched in Find It 2 for just the assets from the toll booth. So we've got a couple of gates over here and I added some one ways. So you'd enter here, you, the gate would lift, you'd be able to pay and you could park. And then over here, I added a chain link fence gate. Now these are all vanilla assets so that it looks like at night we could close this down. You're exiting here anyway, so there shouldn't be a toll booth. So I really appreciate both of those, Sharuka. And then the third one is from Luke and really a lot of other people. Many of you wanted to see the sea life enclosure, which was right here, moved inside of this little cove. And that is an excellent bit of feedback. I'm not sure why I got stuck on keeping it here, but it really blocks the view of the zoo, not just of the zoo, but from the zoo to the water. And moving this over here gives a place where there's a 
less waves if you were gonna view this. So I really like that bit of feedback. I think that this has really improved the zoo and I appreciate it, Luke and everyone else who had this bit of feedback. So now let's get into our build and I wanna start out with what I think is the most unique asset of all of these, the mall. So we're gonna find that underneath our unique buildings, content creator packs, and then we can filter it by the shopping malls content creator pack. And this is the very last one in here, the mall of the marvels. So I wanted to think a little bit about this particular asset. Let's first of all, look at our contours. We don't wanna place this on a hill. And this appears to be a pretty good location for it. We're gonna probably move this around anyway when we think about our parking. So for a building like a mall, there aren't very many analogs in a community. And as a result, it's not allowable by right. To develop something like this, you need to submit a plan unit development, which will go into very specific characteristics of how the project would be built, including but not limited to a whole schematic of the building, all of the spaces, how it might be used, a breakdown of those uses, and the number of parking spaces that they would intend to build. Editor Phil here, and a couple more things that this could go into. This could go into the number of bike parking stalls, it could go into the color of the walls, it could really dive into any amount of detail that the developer wishes to specify or that the city or town requires. Also of note is that the developer would be held to these standards and if they wanted to modify the building or the development in any way, they would have to modify this planned unit development plan. And because of the size of this building, it wouldn't have a standard. So if you were to build a small corner store, you might see that it's a commercial building and that needs one parking space per 300 square feet. They would look at that and try to come up with the number of parking based on those standards for smaller buildings. And in this case, because it's 464,000 square feet, which I figured out by using measure it, this would require approximately 1,500 stalls. And you might go, wow, that is crazy. But so I wanted to look at what malls around me actually have in terms of parking. And this is East Town Mall here in Madison. It's approximately 840,000 square feet, and it has a parking lot that is almost 5,000 stalls. It's kind of ridiculous. But let's be honest, if you were gonna build this, you're gonna build for Black Friday. That is what everyone's thinking about. It's one of the biggest shopping days of the year. They're generating most of their revenue that day, and they wanna be able to accommodate parking on that day. Editor Phil here, and I hope you don't get tired of me today because I'm gonna cut in a couple of times. I just wanna say I don't endorse this. I think that this is a silly way of looking at the world. You shouldn't look at the absolute worst case scenario and plan for that. I think you should probably plan for your average day and then make accommodations for your exceptional days, not the other way around. I also wanna make it clear that I'm not ragging on commercial developers because I've had the exact same conversations with residential property owners who don't wanna get rid of any street parking because of birthdays and Thanksgiving. So we're gonna need a monster parking field. It's gonna to have to loop all the way around here. And as a result, we're gonna to have to level a whole bunch of this. So that's where we're gonna begin. We're gonna level a sizable field through here. So we're gonna get a fairly large brush size. I'm gonna use my crisp edges. And then I also wanna remove all the landscaping so I can actually see what I'm doing. All right, and this is good enough for now. We're gonna clean this up at the end. But for now, I just really wanna focus on getting our parking lots in place. So we could use our new parking lots that came with the base game. We've got these lovely parking lot assets right here. But if we have access to mods, parking lot roads are still better. So we're still gonna go that route. And what we're gonna do is start out with our service parking lot roads. I'm gonna begin right here in the level point. We'll go in six units. And I'm not exactly sure where this is gonna line up just yet. Looks like it's very close right here. So I'm gonna use move it to get the mall exactly where I want it to be. So I just hit M and then I come right in here. That looks pretty close. And now I'll just connect this up. It's clearly not right. And I'm wondering if I hold down Alt, doesn't do anything, <laughs> but it makes me feel good. We are gonna run this down here. And I kept the grid here, which is really what I cared about. And now at least the front of this building is going to work. So we're just gonna continue around the building with this. And then I also want to run some lots along the outside. So I'm gonna use the free form tool and we're gonna to try to make some interesting parking lots. Some that maybe aren't completely uniform because that's a little bit more like what you'd expect to see in the real world. Let's back this out and use our curved road tool and the guideline here to actually make a nice clean connection in. We'll do the exact same thing on this side. And we're gonna to try to fit it in with our terrain that we're creating so they will not be completely symmetrical. And 
and there we go so that'll be the general outline of our parking lot and from within here we're going to need to think about the circulation there will need to be some logical pathways through here you wouldn't want people to get trapped doing some weird circuitous stuff and we're going to want to upgrade this road right here let's start with that so i don't forget about it we just need to go into our unified ui network multi-tool and unlock these roads and then we'll just upgrade these to our parking lot roads and then we can't forget to lock them or we could break our asset and now ideally we would use as large of parking lots as we could through here to make life easy for ourselves but here's the thing the larger assets you've got to really be specific about your widths and i'll just be honest i'm never that thoughtful when i'm designing my service roads and because i'm a glutton for pain i'm going to use our smallest 22 meter parking lots the reason for that is that they're just going to be the easiest to work with. And you can see right here, they're just consistently consistent. So we'll go through every other tile, basically running a new lot up and down here. And now this aisle actually is too close. So what we're going to do here is get rid of this and back this out. And what I'll have to do to make this look acceptable is get rid of a node now it looks good again now for these we're gonna have to get creative and here's where i may change the direction a bit otherwise we'll just run it down here and see what happens it's probably good enough we'll come in a node controller to try to make this look okay and i think that's probably good enough and then over here we're gonna do the exact same thing let's just run this all the way down and i'm leaving a gap here for some sort of a parking uh, or some sort of a pedestrian pathway and I almost want to do that here as well. So we'll do that. And then let's get a whole bunch of parking aisles in place. I want to point out what I'm doing here. I decided to change the orientation of the side lots because you end up with smaller nodes. So that's why I'm going and fixing this one over here as well. All right, so now we have our parking field created for this. And you know, I'm really curious. I said that this needs 1,500 parking stalls. By the end of this, we're gonna figure out if we've actually met that or not. I'm gonna go through and we're gonna add parking near the main entry points. We are gonna add some accessible stalls and then we will add pedestrian connections through here as well. All right, that was a ton of work. I went through and painstakingly added all the parking through here and forgot to count. But before I get to counting all of these stalls, we are going to go ahead and get some power and water run to this site. So let's go ahead and add our water and we'll put that right underneath the road, right where it belongs. All right, and now we need to get power here and we'll just run some of our suburban lines through here with a transformer box up front. And actually, before we do that, let's upgrade our streets because that would be something that the developer would be expected to do. They might fight to not do so, but there's no way they win this battle. Right up to their end of their property line, they're gonna have to pay for the new upgraded modernized streets. And then we can run a power line right down the side of the road here. So we've got our suburban lines here. I'm gonna add a transformer box right about here. And hopefully that jumps us and it does. So we are good to go there. And now I need to do the dirty work. We're gonna count the number of parking stalls that we have here. And after painstakingly counting parking spaces, I finally have a number. 2,158 stalls are located in this lot. So I'm gonna rant a while about parking because when I see stuff like this, I get really angry because this is a wildly bad use of land and all of it makes development more expensive. It induces people to drive their car places. This lot, if every parking stall were to cost $10,000, which is generally the going rate for a surface stall, this parking lot would be $21.6 million to build, which is absolutely crazy. And that cost, that cost is not absorbed by the developer. 
They pass it along to each of their tenants and their tenants pass it along to consumers when they're buying goods. So this type of development makes everything more expensive for the general consumer. And this is the exact same thing that happens in residential development as well. You go and rent an apartment and they're requiring one parking space per bedroom. Now, if you're a family of three, do your kids really need to have a parking stall? I don't, I don't think so, but that is what happens. And that cost is passed along to tenants. That cost is passed along to homeowners. I, I'm sorry that I'm ranting about this, but this is something that really, really bugs me. And I know I sounded like I was done there, but I was not. I rant for a long time. So I wanted to make this a bit more concise and give you some solutions for this. First of all, this is a very hostile environment for pedestrians. You could pull the building up closer to the road so you have the option to walk there if you want to. This would also help with transit service because rather than having the bus pull into the parking lot, which happens all the time, you could have the bus right on the main road much more efficient, much faster to get around. And another thing that you could do is share the parking between uses. And it's actually pretty easy to do. Just have uses that are open during different times of the day share parking. So imagine a bar and restaurant sharing parking with a bank. They're not going to be open at the same time or the overlap will be minimal and you consume half as much land because you're sharing parking between those two uses. I'm not claiming that this is easy, but it's thoughtful planning and it's the kind of thing that we need to do to make good places. All right, let's get back to it. So I don't like this. <laughs> That said, it is realistic, it is reasonable, and it does happen, and we just built it. So for the pedestrian amenities, they're going to be pretty bare bones. I'm guessing that we would have some sort of path right here, and then maybe they do something decorative. So we'll add something like that in there, and we'll even take this to the road to show that we care. And now I want to go around here and look at places where we actually need to put in pedestrian facilities. So this is an entry point, for instance. Obviously, we want to have a sidewalk here. And there are other areas throughout here like this that we're going to add it in as well. But I want to do a bit more work here. We're going to add in some ploppable concrete so that we could actually get that to the freight vehicles back here. And I want to go and unlock these roads one more time to add some crosswalks. And now I'd like to add in some crosswalks. This isn't totally necessary. You can see that people are able to cross in some locations, but there are certain locations like in front of the mall where it is not currently possible to cross. So we'll just unlock this road one more time and then control N in a node controller. Hit this with a node and this is a crossing. You can't see it on the parking lot roads. And in fact, I might just come through here and add my own crosswalk. There we go. Nothing super elaborate, but we've created a crosswalk in the intersection marking tool. And now I'll look at a couple more locations, just switching it to crossings where I need to. Because otherwise, it's a middle and pedestrians cannot cross across there. All right, with that in place, I want to go ahead and fill in some of these areas that wouldn't necessarily have landscaping and then add a bit of landscaping through here. So these areas right here that are too close, we're just going to go into our surface tool and just add a line of concrete right through. And now let's add in some landscaping. And these are, again, requirements that would be dictated by the community. But my guess is that the mall would want things that are low maintenance and still fairly attractive. So think of things like flowering crab apple trees that never develop crab apples. That would be something that I might expect to see here. And then some evergreens, things of that nature, things that are very low maintenance. All right, and I would not call this the most beautifully landscaped place, but I would think that this is fairly rational for what you might see here. They're going to go for the amount of landscaping that they need to meet the requirements, but not really anything else. So we could add some retaining walls back here. But as I look at this, I'm kind of OK with the way it looks. Again, I, I, this comes down to really not doing more than you need to do. And I think that this is what they would kind of go with. 
So now let's talk about a development that maybe is a little bit better. Across the street, let's develop our grocery store. And this is going to be a more people-focused design. We're gonna to try to tie into this, this pedestrian network back here so that some of the workers could walk, walk here and so that some of the shoppers over here might be able to get to this. And then we have this medium grocery store and this large grocery store. This is really a Whole Foods, this Fresh Foods, and this Foods Plus large grocery store is more like a Kroger, and it's a more traditional grocery store. Now for parking for this, I don't wanna count parking stalls again. I just wanna go quick and dirty. So we're just gonna say that the parking lot is gonna be about the same size as the building itself. It's actually probably a little bit bigger than the building itself in reality, but, but this is a nice little guide for us to operate with. And we'll share parking between uses and try to orient the building in a way that's the most pedestrian friendly that it could be. And that's probably right here because the entryway is, well actually let's look. The entryway is right here. So let's move this side towards the road and we're going to need to think about the circulation for this you can see the loading docks are back here so i'm going to go ahead with the parking lot roads again and i want to pull this back one unit i don't want it to be very far from the road i'll turn anarchy on and we'll run this right here so we have this going to the rear of the building so that the semis could get through that would be a requirement and now we have a fairly decent layout for this i want to flatten this out if we turn on our contours, we could see that we, I got real lucky. I should have never done this. <laughs> I should have turned on the contours first to make sure that this was a suitable location. Sometimes you don't respect the topography and you get lucky. This is one of those cases. So let's just let's take a win. When you get a win, you don't turn it down. So I'm going to send this back and then we're going to have a parking field right here. And I'd really love to size this for uh, actually it's not going to matter because we're not we're only going to have a couple of these I, I was thinking it'd be great to size this appropriately and maybe we can so rather than finishing this right off the bat i'm going to add some of the parking to it so we'll have some of our accessible stalls right up front and then i'll add this four by two field now you might be wondering how i was able to add up the parking so quickly if you exit out of here and you click on this, you can actually see this is 26 parking spaces. So by adding two of these, we now have 52. So that is basically how I figured it out. Now I'm gonna pull this on down to the end of where this needs to be. Actually, I'm gonna go beyond that because I don't know where this is going to end. We're gonna add in this. So now we know where this ends and we can just clone this over to the other side. And you might have noticed I am leaving a gap that is very purposeful. We're going to try something and we're going to see if it works. But first, let's copy these parking stalls over. And it's as simple as just I could use the marquee selection. I'll just select it this way. Control C to copy this. But there we go. And now I want to try something with our pedestrian roads. But before we do that, the reason why some of those parking stalls are red is they're being recolored and repaint. I've been having lots of problems with this. If anyone has any solutions, let me know out in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to keep playing with this until I can get this to stop. So I'm going to grab a pedestrian road and we'll run this straight up here. And then back here, we're going to have some more parking. And I'm curious. I want to see if I can pull this off. So basically, we've turned this into parking. And we have been disrespecting our terrain and topography. We're gonna to force the topography to respect us now that we've disrespected it so much. The way that we're gonna do that is, let's first of all get rid of some of these trees and then using Move It's marquee selection tool, I'm just gonna highlight all of this and control H this down to the road. And there we go, everything is nice and clean now. So we added these parking stalls here because I want to add something in the outlot. So I'm going to make one more connection to the road. Right here, our shopping mall plaza. So I'm gonna add one of these here and you shouldn't be able to add more, but I can. And that is simply the beauty of mods. So what we're gonna do is slide this in and then hold down alt. So this will keep this nice and straight in there. All right, and lots of playing around to get this to look right, but it does look like a seamless building now. We will need to add a road behind this to access these, and then we need to go into Bob, so Alt-B. There are all of these parking spaces in the front. I do not want these, so we'll just take the probability down, 
and now we're good here. All those parking spaces are gone, but I really wanted to pull those right up to the edge of the road so you can kind of see what I was gearing for now. And I'm going to slide both of these over so that we can get this service road behind here working. And then last but not least, I'm going to pull this out, make sure it's lined up nice and tight here. We're not going to allow another access to this road. This is an arterial. It's way too much access. There's already probably more access than we like to see on here, but we're going to let, let we're going to deal with a bit more than we like to see that happens all the time and then slope that out. This is looking pretty darn good. This is looking pretty darn good. Now along here, we are going to add a bit of landscaping and I think that they're going to be a little bit better about it. All right, and this is pretty good. It's not a ton of landscaping, but I think it's enough. And we can do one more thing to improve this. Now that we have this lovely pedestrian walk in the center, we can add in some of our young lindens. That was the trick. That's what we needed. <laughs> That's what takes it to the next level. And I'm noticing that I forgot to modify the terrain here. So we are going to come on through and feather this out a bit. All right, I mentioned that I want to have some sort of path connection. This is going to be just a little tiny path, nothing huge. We'll just tie into this path network back here. And at least now, if you're in that neighborhood, there's a way to get through. And we're also gonna add a shortcut through here now. There we go, right out of the park. You don't have to go through that park to get through here and there's a direct access to the other side. So this is a much better design, in my opinion. I would imagine that they would actually try to have some staff parking over here as well, maybe even behind the store, but we're not gonna allow them to over park. So let's talk about the parking for this and if it's enough. So this building right here is about a 78,000 square foot grocery store. So if we were using our same parking ratio of one stall per 300 square feet, we would need 260 stalls for this building. We have about 120. So we are at about the halfway point, a little under halfway. And truthfully, this is probably fine. And hindsight is 2020. Those drive aisles at the top and bottom could have probably been parking as well. That would have got us closer to our parking ratio. But again, we don't really need it. We would have been about 60 shy if we would have done that. And we can share parking between these uses and it'll be fine. But honestly, this is why communities really need to think about their parking requirements. Are minimums necessary at all? Many communities are, are moving away from them and I think they're gonna be better off for it. They're gonna be denser places, more walkable places, more livable places. So I'm all for that. So in cases like this, this is basically a Kroger, and I would look at this and ask them, the developer themselves, what kinds of parking needs have you seen at other stores of this size? I've done that before, and it's helped right size the parking need for a site. And maybe you find out that this is plenty of parking. Maybe you don't, it's hard to say, but we are gonna leave this here for now. I've also had big box stores come back after the fact and say, you know what? We've kind of undershot it. We need a little bit more parking, and that's fine. I would rather that they purchase extra land and come back and do that than build a sea of parking and uh, deal with a gigantic empty parking lot. So this road has a lot of congestion. I could see them lobbying to have a four lane road here. We might just go ahead and upgrade this right off the bat because I do think that the demand is probably there. Uh, and as I look at this, we did not change the pavement color. I'm okay with the parking lots staying what they are, but we definitely need to change this. And we could certainly go through the entire parking lot. I'm concerned that I would break things with collision. So I think that we are gonna leave it. It's not a huge deal, but these ones are certainly very important. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that there is a very high degree of likelihood that one of these would become signalized or both, or that these would become one ways, something of that nature. Malls generally have very high trip generation rates. You end up seeing a ton of traffic coming from these things at certain times of day, and it could make it almost impossible to leave. So that is a consideration. Let's move on from this area 
and talk a little bit about our sports venues over here. And I'm really excited about these because they're just absolutely wonderful assets. So these are found under parks and plazas. If you go to content creator packs and then filter to the large buildings, you get all of your new sports venues. We're going to use a couple of small soccer fields and one of our bigger football fields. So let's grab that first. And I think we could add one more in here. So we're going to do that. We'll figure out how to make this work. And I, again, I forgot to respect the topography and I'm going to pay for it. And the idea that I have here is we've got some of our pedestrian roads that we were using over on Marquette Island. So I want to use these because they look like they're just regular pedestrian facilities. So what we'll do is add that on the side of each of these soccer pitches. And then we'll rotate this around holding down Alt. Pull this right in the center. And then I'm going to grab all of these and flatten them out to the middle. And then we'll do the same things with our roads, the height of realism. Now, let's be completely clear. I think that what I just did stinks, but I also am a realist and understand that these look terrible if they are not on flat ground. So you could either say that this is not suitable and just say we're going to put them somewhere else or you could take the roadway network and force it to work. In reality, I think that you build some pretty monster retaining walls, but that's not really a project that I think is worth uh, taking on when it's so easy to, uh, to improve these grades, even though they are pretty significant through here, it's, it's fine. There, and no one's any the wiser. Looks just fine. I love that. <laughs> so I, I do think that there are some considerations we might want to make through here. Let me know in the comments. I am considering paving this area. Let me know if you want to keep some of this more rural or if we should contemplate paving some of this. I think you could go either way. And the, mean, the main reasons I'm even considering paving it are really kind of vain. <laughs> it's just related to, to how the game interacts with uh, the, the different textures. So it just kind of looks weird to have the concrete blobbiness uh, interacting with the dirt roads in the way that they are. So I sent this road back a ways because I was concerned about the heights again. So now I, that we have a flat pad, we should be able to build this fairly simply. So we'll grab our bigger football field. So we've got this suburban football field. This is almost like a practice field. And then we've got our larger one, which is really more of a, the kind of field that you might expect to see at a high school stadium. I could honestly see there being both of these. So we, we're, we're going to keep both. The idea here is that one would be for practice and the other for play. And that is fairly common. I think with that, uh, we need to add in some of our utilities in this area. Before I forget, before we add our water, there's one more thing. I'm going to think about the fire department. So we're going to send this road back a little ways and cul-de-sac this. You can either cul-de-sac it or hammerhead it, but you need to be able to turn around a fire truck. So we are going to do this by adding in a bit of stretch at the end. And that gives us a nice bulb. And then over here, we should absolutely have some parking as well. And I think this time around, we will use some of our new parking assets. And I'm going to go with our smaller decorative parking networks. The main reason for that is they're just easier to work with. And then we should also add some pedestrian connections over here. We've got our path network. Why wouldn't we add a path right back to this area? And then let's get some water pipes underneath our road, right where they belong. And there we go. We've got that connected up. And I really think that they, these were excellent additions to the community. As we were building this little campus, I couldn't help but think, Boy, I wish we had some football fields. Boy, I wish we had some soccer fields. The one thing that we are still missing is some sort of baseball complex. And that might be something that we have to consider at a later date. 
right now i do think that we are in a good spot and we need to take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour Whenever you build this much parking, it is nice to take a look at it at night to see if you have some deficiencies. And I will tell you what, there are some significant deficiencies here. That said, rather than fixing this right now, this might be a topic for a stream or something that I do off camera. Not the most thrilling thing to watch me place. What will probably be a hundred different lights through here, but they're so necessary. If you, you could see this, if you were parking back here, I don't want to walk to the mall. The Demogorgon could be in there. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. The Demodog coming to get me. So we're not going to do that. We're going to, we're going to fix this, get this nice and lit up. And if you see things through the window, maybe you just turn around and go back to your car. That's the only way you can get here anyway. So <laughs> there we go. And with that, I do think that we've got to leave it here. We've built a lot today. And if you take a look, this these are absolutely massive. The things that we added today, just huge. And it's always fun to build things this big. And I hope that you've enjoyed watching the build. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really cannot wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is an absolute privilege to bring these to you. And I really appreciate your time. Take care. Bye-bye.